In the previous video, I showed you where the formulas came from, but now we really need to start using them and applying them. So what are some steps for using the area and perimeter formulas? First of all, you should always write down the information from the problem. Here's some things you should you could be looking for. First of all, you should know what kind of shape it is. There's a difference between a trapezoid and a rhombus. Are you looking for area or do you know the area? How about perimeter? You could be looking for a base, a height. If it's a trapezoid, two bases. If it's a rhombus, the two diagonals. Put a question mark on the unknown and you're going to have values for the other ones. Don't forget, you can use the, Pythagore uh, uh, the Pythagorean theorem to find the base or height of a right triangle if you know the other two lengths. Well, once you've identified all the information, and this is really the most important step to start, then you say, okay, I'm looking for either area or perimeter for this type of shape. So you're going to write down the area formula for the correct polygon from your math chart or an equation for perimeter. And in some cases, perimeters just add up all the sides. Rewrite the formula from the previous step, but substitute the variables with the numbers. So all these numbers we wrote up here, those are now going to go into the formula. Solve the equation algebraically for the unknown, and make sure your answer is in the correct format. Area is units squared, and perimeter is units. So let's go ahead and try some examples. In this example, I have a parallelogram, a pretty straightforward example really. Uh, the height is 3, and I got that by counting 1, 2, 3. And the base is 6, which I also got by counting that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, the thing I'm looking for is the area and the perimeter. So let's start with the area. That formula is base times height. And this is really very simple for parallelograms. 6 times 3 is unit squared. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and look for the perimeter, which is trickier because I need to find these sides. I went ahead and drew a triangle. So you can see the 3, 2. And I said, well, this is a right angle here. So I can use Pythagorean theorem and find this missing side. And that's square root of 13. That's This side is going to be square root of 13. So I'll have square root of 13 here. And I'll also have, whoops, helps if I use my pen instead. And I'll also have square root of 13 on this side. When I'm looking for my perimeter, I just need to add up all the sides. So I have the two sixes on top and bottom plus the two square roots of 13. Two sixes is 12 plus two square root of 13. And when I, after using the calculator, I get 19 and 2 tenths of a unit. For example two, I'm trying to find the area of the rhombus. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use the diagonals because they're no harder to find than the other sides. So for diagonal one, I notice that I have a right triangle right here. And the units are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's an isosceles, right? And I can use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the first diagonal. So my diagonal is uh, 7 squared plus 7 squared, uh, which is uh, 49 plus 49 or 98. So the diagonal is the square root of 98. Now, if you'd noticed this was a special right, you could have said, oh, okay, each of the legs are 7. So if each of the legs are 7, then the hypotenuse is 7 times square root of 2. So that does provide a nice shortcut when you're familiar with the special right triangles. Now I'm going to look for the second diagonal. And the way I got that is I also made a right triangle. I counted from here to here. And that's 17, and this is 17. So in this particular example, uh, this is also another special right, which is 17 here and 17 here, which is 17 square root of 2, or if you use Pythagorean theorem, square root of 578. Since I'm trying to find the area, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together. Now it's kind of nice if you have it in what's called simplified radical form because it actually does simplify a little easier. I'm using the formula area is 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. 
Diagonal 1 is 7 square root of 2. Diagonal 2 is 17 times square root of 2. Now, uh, those two square roots of 2, I can actually combine. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to give me square root of 4, which is also known as 2. And that 2 and the first 1 half cancel, so I just have 7 times 17, and my area is 119 units squared. In example 3, uh, we have a sign manufacturer makes yield signs by cutting an equilateral triangle from a square piece of aluminum. So the square is 36 by 36. And we know that the base of this triangle is 36 because it takes a whole side. And they want to know how tall is this sign. Well, it's an equilateral triangle. So that tells me something about the angles. The angle here, right there, it's kind of hard to see, and right here and right here are all equal. And for a triangle, that will actually be uh, 60 degrees, if you remember your equilateral triangles. So these are each 60 degrees. Now, if I'm trying to find the height, I'm going to cut that in half. And that's going to make a special right triangle. So I have 18 here and 60 and 30 and 36. I went ahead and drew the special right triangle from the math chart which with the x and the x square root of 3 and the 2x. So the relationship is that this is half of that. And that kind of, um, so that actually tells me this length here and that makes sense because I know the base here is half of 36 and I already know that this length is 36. So that makes sense. 18 is half of 36. What is this other side, my height that I'm looking for? Well, if this was 1, this would be 1 times square root of 3, and that would be 2. But instead, we have 18. So this is 18. So that's 18 times square root of 3. And this is 2 times 18, which is 36. So I use this special right triangle to make a little bit of a shortcut to find the height. If you were really stuck on here, you could go ahead and use proportion, and that would work fine. You could also use trigonometry. Uh, use the, um, since we know the 18 and the 36, you could actually, or you know the 60, you could use, say, sine or even tangent to find that missing height. And you would get the same number. Now I find the area by substituting into the formula, which you've been using, and you actually do quite well with it, which is 1 half times base times height. The base we already said was 36. The height is 18 square root of 3. I did some simplifying and multiplying. And finally, I got 561.2 square inches. Now, uh, for part C, they want to know how much material is left. So they're looking for this part right here, this white area. And what I can do is take the area of the square and subtract the area of the triangle. The area of the square is going to be 36 times 36, or 36 squared which is 1,296. The, then subtracting the area of the triangle from here, I get 1,296 minus 561.2, or 734.8 inches squared. In our last example, now I'm giving you the area. I'm telling you the area is 112 yards squared. And this is for a trapezoid. I'm trying to, you can see the answer here. The, the height is 7, but how did I get that? Well, I first of all wrote down all the information I knew. Area is 112 yards squared. Base 1 is 20 yards. Base 2 is 12 yards. Here's the height that I'm looking for. I call this x the angle I'm looking for. And I'm also looking for the perimeter. I kind of put that L there later because I'm going to need that for the perimeter. Well, I'll go ahead and write the area formula and substitute in. For a trapezoid, area is 1 half times base 1 plus base 2 times height. If you're using a calculator, be careful because these two need to be added together before being multiplied. You can avoid mistakes by using parentheses. So I have 112 equals 1 half times 20 plus 12 times the height. 20 plus 12 is 32. Uh, 32 divided by 2 is 16. Divide both sides by 16, and I find the height is 7. Okay, well now that I know that the height is 7, this tells me this is a right triangle here. I know the adjacent side and I know the opposite side. So I could use tangent. 
tangent of x is 7 over 4. I'm trying to find the angle, so I'm going to do inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of 7 fourths is 60. It's not exactly 60, but it's really close. So angle x is 60 degrees. Now I need to find the um, distance around the perimeter. So I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem. That seems to be a little cleaner. And I'll say L squared equals 4 squared plus 7 squared. Since L is the hypotenuse, it is on the side by itself. And we get 16 plus 49, 65. That's square root of 65. Well, perimeters add up all sides. So I'm going to have square root of 65 on this side plus square root of 65 on that side. And I have the 12 and the 20. When I add them all up and combine like terms, I get 32 plus 2 times the square root of 65.